It's pretty normal. Here with us, civil rights and trial attorney Adante Pointer. All right, gentlemen, to me, there are two C's that this trial hinges on. The first is consensual or not. Was it consensual that he was in that house or was it burglary or trespassing? But the second is credibility because I think it completely hinges on the credibility of either the alleged victim or the defendant. Adante, I think that's what the jury has to weigh. Yeah, there's the the jury's certainly going to wrestle with, wrestle with both of those C's, no question. You know, I listening to his testimony right there, you could tell like this young man appears and he kept harping on she was more experienced, she was older, she was more mature. Either that's a genuine feeling that he had, or he was prepared excellently to deliver that defense on the stand. We'll never know, perhaps. But at the end of the day, I did find it pretty convincing. I still think there's a problem, though, and that is the way in which he lived in this woman's attic for so much time and came back and forth and copied keys and put trackers on her. That doesn't go to someone who's just being led astray and is a, a naive puppy dog being led by someone who's much more experienced and taking advantage of them. That has shades of it being someone who's more of a stalker and has criminal intent, and I think that's where the case will fall. And I agree with you. That's mm -hmm. exactly what I was thinking, which is, you know, it may fall short with the jury to basically say, okay, so it's her fault that he broke into her house? Yeah. I yeah, I mean, it's going to work. I don't know if he's saying that at the end of the day. I, I'll push back a little bit of Dante and say, as a young guy, I think kind of what, what they're we're hanging their hat on is that she was asking him to be this stalker, and he didn't quite know what it meant to be a stalker. He was doing the things that he thought it meant to be a stalker, right? Th these are the well, arguments that you can, that you can, you can, you can, pause. but what's interesting is in the charging decision, he's not charged as a stalker. And this is one of those cases because of the gray area, you do have the underlying trespass, which is a misdemeanor, and you have the burglary uh, with intent to invade someone's privacy as the felony. I wonder with those gray areas, might the jury say, okay, we don't think this kid should walk away. What he did was clearly over the, the bounds, but we kind of understand why he crossed those bounds. She is not blameless in this situation, and they go for the misdemeanor as some sort of compromise. I think that's certainly on the table. You know, he delivered probably about as well as you could. The whole effect of being someone who's unsophisticated, who is naive, and, you know, kind of sitting here wrestling with what he did versus the trouble he's found himself in, and essentially saying, hey, I only did this because I was infatuated, I was in love, I was in this relationship, and I was doing what she told me to do in order to try to keep her happy. So, you know, he, they, he did it the best he can. I think the jury will wrestle with it. You talk about a compromise verdict, they certainly could avoid perhaps the burglary, but there are other charges that they can reach for that also carry, a ser carry serious consequences. And at the end of the day, the punishment, no matter where it comes out at, should certainly consider, could, should certainly uh, contemplate some type of mental health counseling in order to address the issues that he's clearly dealing with. Because I think that came across on the stand. Yeah. And you mentioned, though, it's not just him, it's her. And we know that because of her testimony. I think that's where we might get a compromise verdict. Mm -hmm. Let's listen to what she said about her own mental health issues. You sent a text saying written, right? Correct. Okay. Why don't you say that? Um, I have a lot of mental problems. It, it sounds like you guys kind of went back and forth kind of game. Is that fair? I wouldn't say that. Did you really want to be here? Um, no. No. Okay. You see, Judge, with the admission that she had mental health mm -hmm. issues, with the admission that she had alcohol problems, mm -hmm. with the admission that she did at points lead him on, and I think it was clear manipulation was going on. The question was, was it just for the goods that she was getting from him, the TVs, the fireplaces, and the attention, or was it also to come in the house and be a stalker? Because involved in this, I think, as well, and Dante, you, you, you can agree with me or not, but th there was low self-esteem. And I think at the end of the day, that's what led to some of the mental health issues, but also could have led her to say, hey, you know what? Having a stalker might not be the worst thing in the world. And it may be the reason, just quickly, that we have a compromise verdict and a lesser charge. Exactly. That's where I was going with it. All right, Adante, stand by. We did run out of time. Sorry about that. Lori Vallow-Daybell was just convicted of murder and conspiracy to